Hi, I'm Jack, and this is my father, Tom. Uh, we're going to talk about this old hot rod he built when he was 16 years old, and kind of how important it is to our to our family and what we've all gone through with it. So, uh, where did you first get this car, and what what inspired you to build it, kind of the way that it is? Well, <laughs> I found it at a junkyard, and it was just a body and a frame. Uh, some guy was going to make a stalker out of it, and then he uh, gave up on it, and then I just happened to see it there, and I talked it over with the guy, and I got it for 150 bucks, and that was the start. It was was not much. It was just a frame. There was nothing in it. There was, and the body was, there was no steering, no motor, or anything in it, and I brought it home, put it in the driveway at that time. I was living at home yet, and my dad wasn't really happy about it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grandpa. But that was the start. Yeah, that was in '59. So, well, uh, what, uh, what, what, and well, I guess why, why the Hemi? Where did you find that, or what did you do with well, the, the motor? I went know? to the junkyard and uh, I looked around, and that this one junkyard had a whole building full of engines. Well, when you're 16 years old, 17 years old, and you spot the Hemi right away, you know, sure, that yeah. looks like a pretty good engine. So, <laughs> so I bought the Hemi and brought that home, and uh, my dad wasn't too happy about that either. <laughs> he asked me what I'm going to do, and I said, I was going to put it in here. And he says, well, you're going to kill yourself if you do that. <laughs> well, I'm still here, so. Well, it's been but, 60 years, so and uh, Hemi's still in it, ago, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess I've, I had a question also about the, the back end of the car, you know, why there's no trunk lid and, you know, the, the, I well, guess the, the spheres on it and things like that. Uh, when I got the car, it didn't have a trunk in it. It was probably made into a pickup truck when they did that back then. So I had to do something with it, and I went to a little job shop in Manitowoc, Gatorman's, they were calling. They rolled that, rolled that piece for me. And I got that in there all welded in, and it looked pretty good. And then I, uh, but it looked kind of plain, so I had to put some, I put the bars and stripes on there, and yeah. I, I put the license plate in there and some 59 Rambler taillights. Didn't you take them out of Grandma's car? <laughs> <laughs> well, she had a, they had a 59. My dad had a 59 Rambler station wagon for a while, and I liked the taillights, so that's what I got in there. Mm. And, and then I had, when I got the car, the, the fenders were laying inside, and they looked like they were tacked on there at one time or something. I don't know what that was, but and I put them on and blended it <coughs> all in. Little flares in there, and, yeah. and uh, I had a lot of buddies help me. So, no, well, yeah, kind of. I think I remember you telling me that you kind of liked that Beach Boys car, the car that was on the Beach yeah. Boys album. Before it was on the album, I was in the little pages, and I remember Yeah, that, that kind of inspired me, that Beach Boys album yeah. with that blue coupe on there, and yeah. I wanted something like that. I wanted something channeled. I, wanted, I always saw the pictures in the magazines where the guy would stand there, and his head was above the car, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I always thought that'd be nice to get it that low, so I, I got it. Channel her down to below the frame, or just to the bottom of the body was even with the bottom of the frame, yeah. and that looked like a pretty good height for me, so I went with that. What about the color? Where did you come the up color? with that? The color? Well, <laughs> I was in the auto parts store, and I had a, one of them big books with them little chips yeah, in it, about yeah. that big. <laughs> and uh, I must have looked at them all day, and, but I found one, a little blue chip that was... <coughs> It was a Chrysler, about a 56 trim color, mm -hmm. and I thought that's that looks pretty good. So that I bought a gallon of that, and that's what she what she ended up being blue. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny because I, I talked with the guy uh, with uh, Norm Grabowski. They made a copy of Norm Grabowski's uh, Roadster, and he told me that. Uh, uh, he asked me what color this car was because I, I got the brake set up for it when we redid it and uh, I told him what the color was and he says well tell your tell your old man he did something right back then because that's the exact same color Norm Grabowski's uh, tea bucket was. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of neat. So yeah. Then then what happened? How'd you end up getting rid of it? Well I a needed whole, a whole bunch of I kids had, around I know that. I had, uh, <laughs> I had it for about 10 years and I uh, 
I needed a driver. I did, this I couldn't use as a driver when when uh, we've got kids, you know. And yeah. So I traded it for a '65 Chevelle. And uh, after that, I I didn't see it again for years and years and years. I don't know what happened. I traded it at a at a car lot, but where it went, I had no idea. So. I guess that's where I kind of stepped in. I remember yeah, when you got you rid of it. Yeah, you always wanted it, so you you chased it, yeah. tracked it down, I guess. But yeah, I got so mad when you got rid of it. I didn't talk to you for two weeks. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, but I I can remember. That's that's kind of. I always told you I was going to buy it back. I never thought it was uh, going to be forty plus years before we got it back. But I remember when I turned sixteen years old and got my driver's license because I remember you saying it went to Sheboygan, well, not too far away from where we live. Yeah. And uh, me and my friend Dan Lindholm, we drove to Sheboygan to a hot rod shop, and uh, we we were driving up and down streets just trying to see if we could find it sitting in a garage or somewhere around like that. I mean, it was it was something that never got away from me, you know. So, and even as I got older, then we started building hot rods together. We built the, you know, the Model A coupes that we yeah. built together, and we'd go to car shows together, and then we built our 32 Fords. And uh, when I got the, <coughs> excuse me, when I got the 32 Fords done, we got our both our cars done. We started going to cruises down in Plymouth, Wisconsin, and uh, I'd take my girls down there with me because they were still pretty young. I think my son was too old by then, and uh, I remember talking with the you know guys down there asking around if they know of a 31 Dodge Coupe with a Hemi in it. And uh, one day a guy comes up and starts talking to me about it. You know, he says, "Yeah, I know where that car is. You know, it's only about a mile away from here." So he gave me the directions, and I, I can remember that day plain as day. I we drove over there. I drove over there with my car and pulled in a driveway and there it was sitting there uh, and man I just felt like a little kid again because I can remember sitting in that car riding in that thing uh, when you had it and I'd stand on the floor I was hanging onto the dash and I can remember the Hemi shaking a little bit and watching the chrome fan go around and that, that thing was just the coolest you know no other kid's dad had a car like that uh, so that's probably why this thing always stuck out to me and I always wanted it back you know I always wanted to get it and well, Boy, I saw it after all the mirrors. It was like seeing an old friend. Yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> it wasn't the same. Uh, it was kind of, I guess, put together wrong. There was a lot of things that were yeah. wrong on it. But uh, I knew if we got it, we'd make it the way it was. Yeah. You know. So and that's well, it still had the original motor in it. So. Yeah, it's still the headers that you built for it, and <coughs> you know, a lot of the things were. The rear end, you know, the the back end, the trunk, and all of the, that stuff was all there. The fenders were still on it, so it, there was a lot of it that was still there. That's why I had to have it. But but boy, what we went through to get it, it was it's almost like a soap opera, you know. Really, when you think about it, we had uh, uh, for five years I tried buying it from that guy. And finally, he couldn't come up with a price, and as soon as he found out I had a history with the car, uh, the price just kept going up and up. And then he takes it to Iola. He says, uh, I'm just going to take it there to see what I can get for it. I'm a sentimental old guy. I'll sell it to you, but, you know, I just want to see what we get. And uh, turns out he he got offered, you know, a pretty good sum for it. And he says he wanted $1,000 more than that. I told him the car wasn't worth that, but I, it's not like I can find another one. This is the only one like it. So I uh, uh, told him I'd give him the money for it. Uh, said, I'll come get it tonight. He says, no, he's got to go, his mother's an old folks home, he always goes sees her this night. So uh, so I said, I'll come tomorrow morning, or tomorrow after work. So he says, well, I got another guy wanting to look at it. I said, well, I don't know what you want me to say. You uh, said you want this much for it, I'm giving you that much for it, tell the guy it's sold. Okay, I'll do that. Next day, right, as I'm loading up the car trailer to come get the car, he calls me and he says he sold it to that guy, to the other guy. Sold it for $500 more, didn't even give me a chance to buy it. Sold it to a guy from Iola that restored Indian motorcycles, and uh, it's you know the way it all came together. It's kind of funny because my my dad's brother here had two Indian motorcycles that were my grandpa's, and he was restoring them at that time. And I grabbed a card from a guy from Iola that restored Indian motorcycles, so I called him up, asked him if he bought that Dodge Coupe, and he says, "Yeah, I, I'm I'm the guy who bought it." I said, "Well, if you ever want to sell it, I'd be really interested in buying it from you." I said, I, "You know, it's." something I really you know really like I didn't want to give them any more information because it seemed like the last time I did the price just kept going up so uh, uh, he says no it's not for sale 
Five years in a row, I would call them right before I'd go to Iola. We always go to Iola and look for parts for cars and stuff like that. And I would, I would call them, and the last time he just hung up on me. And I thought, geez, I know I got an annoying voice, but, you know, come on. <laughs> you know? So I started watching eBay. And uh, sure enough, I just, my wife and I, we just got her a brand new Dodge Challenger, and I bought a brand new motorcycle. And next thing you know, here's that car for sale on eBay. I don't have any spare money, you know. My savings is down a little bit. Oh man, I was just wild. I, <laughs> I can remember saying I, I offered a guy, I said, oh, I, I got a hold of the guy from eBay who had it for sale. I told him I'd trade you a truck or a Harley or a, you know another hot rod or you know whatever you want. You let me know or you know cash. Just come up with a price so that we can we can you know get this thing. And after about talking to him, I talked to him maybe three or four times. And he says, boy, you seem really interested in this car. What is so special about this car? And I said, I don't know if I can even tell you. I said, I just, I guess I just like it. He says, come on, there's more to it than that. So then I told him, I broke down, you know, and he says, well, we got to get this car to you. So he drove all the way from Murrow, Wisconsin. That's where it ended up going. And uh, he came down and looked at all the stuff I had to trade and, you know, talked about money and everything. He walked in my garage. He looked at a Model A coupe I was offering to him and they looked at the Harley and he looked at my motorcycle or looked at my truck and uh, next thing you know he just says well I guess I'd just rather have cash so I'm like ah oh, shit so I <laughs> end up uh, uh, just I had to borrow some money in order to buy the thing but I, I like I told my wife I said I'm not going to get another chance at this car so ends up being four thousand dollars more than what me and that other original guy uh, agreed on it to so here it turns out it's not even the guy who had the Harleys in, or who had the uh, Indians for sale anymore. It was a guy who owns a body shop. And uh, this guy went to, that, uh, to the guy with the Indians' house and uh, to give him a price on painting a boat for him, a sailboat. So he comes, up, comes in there and he says, uh, you know, I can give you a price on painting a sailboat, he says, but... You know, what do you want for that little hot rod, that little coupe over there? And uh, the guy says, well, I'm just going to I'm just gonna sell it, he says, you know, so I don't, you know, I don't know. He says, I'll tell you what, I'll paint that sailboat for you if you uh, give me that hot rod. The guy says, fair enough, good deal. I said, so I ended up buying it from the guy who painted the sailboat for him, uh, the guy who had it for sale on eBay. And the funny thing about that is, that's what I do for a living, I paint boats. So I was just like, I couldn't believe it, you know. So finally we agreed on a price, and I went went up there and picked it up. And uh, I can remember the first time we got it back home off the car trailer, and I loaded it in the garage. It was late at night. And the next day you came over, and I had these wheels and tires already for, uh, for another car because I was going to make one similar to this one. So I, I remember that morning I jacked it up, and I put these wheels and tires on it to try and make it look a little bit more like it used to be. And... Uh, we went for a ride around the block in it, and both of us looked at each other after one wrap around the block. Well, ain't gonna drive it like that anymore. <laughs> it was pretty messed up. Yeah. It had a Jaguar rear end in it that was in crooked, and the front end was messed up, and the steering was like turning a bus. We were turning, yeah. turning, turning. It felt like we we're turning a Titanic. You couldn't go around the corner for nothing, and so but we, it ran. It, it ran. It ran good, and yeah. So I, you know, again, I didn't, I, you know. I didn't feel ripped off because I knew I got the car I always wanted, yeah. you know. Uh, but it was... It might have been, it might have never been a famous 32 Ford or a 34 Ford or something, but it was always famous to me because it was yours, you know. So that's the, yeah. that's the way I always wanted it. So uh, I guess I thought I'd get it done in about two years, but every time I took something apart on it, I found something else that we needed to fix and get right and... But once we started putting it back together and getting it right, I can remember you sitting at one time and you said, boy, this is, <laughs> it's like deja vu. He says, this is yeah. so weird. I did this when I was 16 years old or 17 years old and we were sitting in the car again. So, I mean, we had a lot of fun restoring it back to the way that it was. And yeah. We put yeah, it back yeah. as close as we could get it to. Uh, but it's definitely, for me, it's a car that will never, <laughs> it's going to my son. It's never leaving our family again. So had a lot of fun with it since we got it done yeah. that's for sure so building it's probably a lot of fun that was a lot of fun for me i had a lot of a lot of buddies help me with that and yeah i can remember some of them like al bunk yeah, or ronnie <laughs> tate and al bunk and and oh, let's see john Odie helped me with it and uh, i even had some of the girls 
<laughs> when hung there all my wife they had to come out want to work on it so i gave him a bucket of water and some 600 sandpaper and said go to it <laughs> so uh, it was a lot of fun it was it brought back a lot of memories and and uh i really had a lot of fun and now we're having fun with it so uh we had it down to the Street Rod Nationals this year. Yeah, for the 50th anniversary, we figured 60 years ago you built it and we'll take it to a show yeah, for 50 years. 60 and, years, yeah. yeah. It's going to survive better than me, I think, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. But we're definitely keeping it, so like I say, my son Nick will have it someday. I remember uh, Tiny Kaminsky telling me once, he says, he says, sure, I remember that car. He says, I remember push starting that thing all the time. Never got it to run decent, he says. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it ran pretty good when I was a kid, yeah. at least from when I yeah. remember. So. So, so, oh, yeah. So that's pretty much, I guess, yeah. the story of the car. It's uh, uh, 31 Dodge with a. It's a 1931 Dodge with a 331 Chrysler Hemi in it. It's got the original yeah. front suspension on it. Uh, headers, his brother Dave made, or his brother uh, Jim my, made. My, uh, my brother Jim. He worked at a former tube company. They bent. Manville bending tubing and they they bent them all up for me and I put that I had to put them on there I just love them headers just like out a tea bucket or something yeah, you gotta yeah, have that yeah. you know and with the caps on the end that's an oil filter from a Chevy 6 and uh, well, as soon as I got it on there I had to take them caps off and just see, to what, see it what it sounded what it barked like, like yeah <laughs> and it sounded pretty cool I remember one of the first car shows we went to somebody asked me if we could take them off just to hear it too and we'd start yeah. it up and <laughs> let the thing bark away so, so that was a lot of fun so yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've built a lot of hot rods through the years. I think it's kind of neat because we'd have, uh, you got actually counting this one, well, it's mine now, but counting this one, we got you got all four of the hot rods you built since 59. Yeah. You know, yeah. I guess there was probably a 10 or a 15 year lull when you were building kids instead yeah. of cars. <laughs> so uh, that you didn't build one, but you got one that you built in the 80s, one you built in the 90s, and the one in 2000. And the, uh, uh, the last one, your your roadster that you just finished. So, so I guess hot rods have been in our blood forever. So, uh, let me tell you about the interior. That's got a story too. Uh, I guess the seats are from a GM. MG. MG GM. Well, anyway, a buddy of mine, he worked at a, a upholstery shop, and he he helped me with the door panels, and. Uh, I didn't have enough money to post the seats, so he got me some dye, and I dyed them, and they were sticky for two years after that. <laughs> the stuff never died. And it dried, and uh, the, the gauges I bought at a hot rod shop down in Milwaukee, they're all Stuart Warner gauges, and uh, I put the radio back here between the two seats, and uh, Al Bunk helped me with the with the headliner, and we put that in, and I came out pretty good for doing it in my garage with my buddies. So I, uh, I was I was proud of it, so I was happy with it. But that's pretty much the interior. The steering column I got out of a '57 Ford, and uh, it, it worked. For, it worked good for me, and uh, I, uh, the linkage we had to do a little bit with the linkage, but it it cleared the headers and it worked. It worked pretty nice. And this was made out of. I I wanted some something in the back and I didn't know what, so I took a quarter inch rod and I tacked it down there and there and I, and I put some fiberglass over here and smoothed it all out and. and uh, it gave, made it look a little bit narrower. <laughs> and, uh, and these are the taillights from the 59 Rambler. So, and, uh, gas tank is in behind the seat. But, uh, the first but good tires I got for it were Atlas Beer Crons. They were soft and they grabbed the and John only told me about them. He said they're really good tires, they really grab and they did. <laughs> but they little little big black they you could really lay a strip of rubber with them. <laughs> they were soft. 
but they grabbed no that was fun but it must be very special to have the car back again <laughs> it's just got to be yeah it, it, well everything you had to think about like the motor mounts you didn't have motor mounts you could buy it didn't have a transmission brace you could buy you know there was none of that kind of stuff you had to make most of everything you know and there, and you had to do some thinking and <laughs> sometimes it didn't work the first time you had to do it again but you got it you know and uh but there was a lot of stuff like that the steering and all that stuff you couldn't buy you know it's easy nowadays but but you did it or you didn't have it <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right well i guess so after you building it 60 years ago and then letting it go and me being upset about that. I like I say, it's never leaving this family again. I've had it for we've yeah. I've had it for 10 years again now, and it's never leaving. I mean, we're <laughs> my grandkids are gonna have it someday. Uh, you know, when, well, when my cool. son gets rid of it, so I'm I'm definitely leaving this one to yeah. my son because to me this was always a car that meant the most to me. You know, so. Uh, well. And it's because you built it. It's not because it was a famous car or nothing like that, but it was because you built it, oh. you know. So that's why we always build hot rods, because, uh, you know, <laughs> the way well, that you made this one and stuff. That. So Even when we are building the other ones, I was always thinking about this one. So this one, to me, was always the most important car. Uh, you might go to a car show and walk right by it. People might walk right by it and not even notice it, but I don't really care, because to me it was the, you know, it's definitely the coolest car around. So, yeah. <laughs> so... But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I think for sure, you know, it's as close as we could make. So guys, uh, I think that we ought to start it, don't you think? Sure, don't you think it's kind of fun? Yeah. See what it sounds like. Huh? Start it up for him. Yeah. So here's a little bit of history in action. <laughs> 